This video looks a bit further into the idea of a graph of a function and the idea of coordinates and using coordinates to sketch a rough picture of a function. So we're going to talk about the Cartesian plane, the picture that's formed by corresponding independent and dependent variable values is referred to as its graph. Now, functions can be graphed on what we call a Cartesian plane, named after Rene Descartes, or if you like, you can just call it the rectangular coordinate system, uh, given that name because they, there's sort of a rectangularness to it, if you like. Um, we often talk about the independent variable being represented on the horizontal axis or horizontal number line, if you want. So we might use it something like this. We often use X for our independent variable and the dependent variable, which is often Y, we put that on the vertical axis. And the Cartesian plane formed by those two number lines or axes is then divided into four regions, which we call quadrants. And quadrant one is generally the positive quadrant where both X and Y are positive. And then we name the quadrants in a counterclockwise fashion, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So remember there's an example we've been looking at in a few of these videos, f of x equal to x squared minus 3x. And we've seen a few function values for that, like f of minus 2, which is equal to 10. Remember that's by substituting minus 2 wherever we see an x, and so on for a bunch of other x values as well. Now these independent and dependent variable values form ordered pairs. That's what we call the numbers like, for example, 0 and 0, or 5 and 10. Together, they form what we call an ordered pair. Another name for them is the coordinates, when we're referring to a location on the Cartesian plane. So the coordinates x and y of a point, and usually written in that order. So for example, for f of x equal to x squared minus 3x, we've got coordinates of minus 2, 10, minus 1, 4, 0, 0, taken from this one, 1, minus 2, and so on down the line, if you take all of these function evaluations and turn them into a coordinates or ordered pair. Now the, the x value, the independent variable value, is always first, and the dependent value always comes second in the ordered pair. And roughly, roughly speaking, to graph a function by hand, or at least to sketch it, we plot a set of these coordinates on our Cartesian plane, and then join them with some sort of smooth curve an approximation of what we think all of the points in between would be. So something like this. So for our example function, which was x squared minus 3x, here's some of those points. And you could start to plot or sketch a line moving through those, your best estimate of what's going on in the in-between parts. It's not exact, but it's a good sketch. OK, let's have a go at it ourselves. Here we've got a function y of x equal to 3x minus 5, and I'm stepping you through it. So first of all, choose some x values. Why not use these? You can use others if you like, though. Find the corresponding y values that go with each of those x values. Write the set of five coordinates, plot them on the plane, and connect them with a smooth curve, and label your plot. Give yourself a moment now to try this one out, and then come back and follow it through with me. OK, so I'm just going to use the values I've suggested uh, in the question, minus 1 through to 3, the integers, and then find the corresponding y values. So first of all, y of minus 1 just means substitute minus 1 into our function wherever we see an x. So we're going to get minus 3, minus 5, or minus 8. y of 0 would be 3 by 0 minus 5, or minus 5, and so on. Next, we're asked to write the five uh, coordinates, the set of five coordinates. So that's pretty much just pulling out the x and y values from here. So the first one's minus 1, minus 8. Then we have 0 and minus 5, 1 and minus 2, 2 and 1, and finally 3 and 4. Next, we're asked to plot those coordinates on the Cartesian plane and connect them with a smooth curve, and then finally label the plot. So I've started it off just by drawing my two number lines, or axes, the, the x horizontally for the independent, and y vertically for the dependent values. Now I've pasted the coordinates we're going to work with down to the bottom here, so that I know what kind of values I need for x and y. 
I already know that for x, I'm going to need minus 1 through to 3. So I probably could have put this vertical axis further over to the left. But that's fine. Let's work with what we've got. I'm going to put a minus 1 there, a 1 there, a 2 there, and a 3 just about there. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit rough, but try to get it as close as you can. Then in terms of y's, I need to go from minus 8, that's the most negative y value, all the way up to 4. So I'm going to pop in minus 8 down here, minus 4 about there, halfway between, positive 4 and positive 8. I won't need to go that high, but why not label it in? And for that matter, why not put a minus 2 and a minus 3 in here also? So then we can start to plot these points. Minus 1 and minus 8 means that I go across to x equals minus 1, and then down to x equals minus 8. So I can pop that in there. Then 0 minus 5, x equals 0 is here at the intersection, down to minus 5, which would be about here. 1 and minus 2, which should be about here. 2 and 1, which would be roughly here. And finally, 3 all the way up to 4. So you can see we've got our three co uh, five coordinates, or ordered pairs, right there. And next we're asked to join them with a smooth curve. And in this case, the curve, by the looks of it, is actually going to be a straight line. And that kind of makes sense to me, and it will make sense to you too after you've seen the videos on uh, straight lines. Uh, but it, for the moment, it doesn't really matter. It's just a line going through those little points as close as we can. So that's the, the picture, or the graph, of our function y of x equal to 3x minus 5. Okay, the last little thing that it said there was to label it. Uh, the only thing that I'm really missing is a label for the function itself. I've already got labels for the axes, and I've got uh, tick marks or locations along those axes as well. So that's our first full-on example of sketching a graph. In this video, we've seen the idea of a graph of a function discussed. We introduced what a Cartesian plane or rectangular coordinate system was and looked also at the terms ordered pairs or coordinates. And we saw how to roughly sketch the plot of a function by evaluating some values, plotting those coordinates and then joining them with a smooth curve.